It all begins with a battle between Lin and his friend Lu. The action takes place in a world hidden from human knowledge. Lin shouted that he had always trusted Lu and was there for him. He didn't understand why Lu had betrayed him. Lu replied that Lin dared to rise to the level of a god when he was at the bottom because of their friendship. After which, without any regret in his eyes, Lu said goodbye to Lin and threw a punch that destroyed the guy. Lin was thinking at this moment that this was the end again, and once again he would have to die. In his previous life, Lin was just an ordinary guy. Until that fateful day when a mysterious man with a scar on his face appeared and took his life. However, even this time, Lin opened his eyes and realized that he wasn't dead. After such a powerful blow from Lu, it was impossible to survive. Last time, he was reborn in the heavenly realm, re-entering the path of perfection. From a mortal's point of view, the nine heavens had fallen into chaos, punishing gods, eliminating demons, and getting rid of all obstacles to development through the world. Lin thought that in this life, he could improve his chi and ascend all the way to the end of the heaven realm. However, appearing as before, Lin realized that his spiritual core remained completely untouched. He couldn't believe it was the will of heaven. He felt incredible joy and strength at the same time. Suddenly, Lin opened his eyes and saw a very familiar place in front of him. A brothel, high rises, buildings reinforced with steel. The boy realized it was the ground. And suddenly he noticed that he was wearing the same clothes he had been wearing when he first died. And Lin is in the same place where he was killed. He rummaged in his pants pocket and found his phone. On the phone screen, Lin saw the date May 15th. 2019, 8 p.m. He realized that he had returned to his past life on earth. And now the time was two hours before his death. Lin couldn't be happy that he was still alive. However, Lin couldn't understand what that divine light was that had penetrated his body. But he quickly dismissed those thoughts and decided that there was no difference anymore. Lin decided to see if he could use it. He couldn't understand if his cultivation energy had been absorbed by the divine light. Unexpectedly, Lin felt some pure and massive energy. He assumed it was a great heavenly life force. Despite losing the cultivation of the past, he had gained such a mysterious and divine power. The boy wondered that if it wasn't for the combination of these powers, would he have been resurrected so easily? Lin realized that his development was not high enough. He felt many restrictions on all his abilities. At this time, Lin didn't realize that the cultivation conditions on earth and in the heavenly realm were different. Heaven realm cultivation method includes chi gathering and foundation building, golden realm, spiritual core, god transformation. Each realm is divided into three levels. Each realm requires a huge amount of energy to maintain. At this time, Lin didn't know that the subtle spiritual energy on earth was no longer utilized in the heavenly realm. Lin at this time was thinking about how much stronger he was now than his former self. Since ancient times, spiritual energy was no longer useful for cultivators. They were looking for another way to utilize the essence of heaven and earth, creating other down methods. Each cultivation realm is divided into three levels, the beginning, the middle, and the peak. The realm of cultivators on earth is divided into spirit, dark, beginning, transformed, formless, ascended, and earthly. Lingjing cultivators are strong and fast. Xianjing cultivators can cover a distance of a hundred steps in an instant. Xintian cultivators have unrivaled defense. Hushan cultivators can defeat hundreds of enemies. Wuxian cultivators can destroy enemies from the air. Xinjing cultivators can control the whole world. After breaking through to the realm of the ascended realm, cultivators would enter the next form of existence. Since ancient times, no one could reach this realm. Meanwhile, Lin was thinking about the fact that he would have to try his best to remove the restrictions. Also, the feeling of revenge did not leave the boy's heart. He promised himself that he would recover and take revenge on his former friend Lu. Suddenly his phone vibrated. A message came to him. Ching wrote and asked him to come home. Lin decided that he would have to go to her after all. He went on his way and came to the girl's house. Ching opened the door and asked why he looked homeless. She asked him if he came from the garbage dump. Then the girl smiled embarrassedly and asked what was wrong and if he wanted to tell her about his wild night. Lin stood still and stared at the girl for a long time. He couldn't even say a word. Ching came closer to him and asked her dear husband what had happened to him. Lin pushed her away and said that he was walking, tripped, and fell. So he needed to take a shower 
and asked not to be disturbed. Chen at this time is very angry because she is worried about him, and he doesn't want to share anything. Lin took a shower, recovered a little. He was about to go on a business trip. Cheng asked him again where he was going. Lin replied that it didn't matter. Lin's only thought was that he wouldn't make past mistakes. He didn't understand why the scarred man didn't kill him this time. The guy also calmed down a bit and thought he should treat his wife better. Suddenly, Cheng knocked and Lin let her in. Ching brought a new set of clothes for him because his clothes are all dirty. Lin placed his hand on the girl's head, looked into her eyes and expressed his gratitude. Ching was surprised at such a gesture. After that, Lin got dressed and said that he would be back soon. The girl wondered where he was in such a hurry. Lin reassured her and told her that he would only walk a little and come back. The guy went on his way. On the way he thought about how he used to be too cold with his wife, and in the end they don't even have anything to talk about. Lin thought it was worth relaxing somehow. Suddenly he saw a man talking very impulsively to someone on the phone. The man yelled into the phone that he was near the square, and for them to hurry. Lin looked at him briefly and concluded that judging by his clothes, he had no taste at all. The guy decided to go to some place to catch his breath. However, he searched his pocket and discovered that he had not brought his wallet. Suddenly, Lin noticed a girl running towards him. She was shouting loudly that she needed help. She ran up to the guy and attacked him. The girl was crying and screaming that she was being chased by rapists and needed help. Suddenly, three unknown men came running after the girl. They told Lin that he should give them the girl, so as not to cause problems. Lin replied that he didn't want any trouble. Then one of the men came up and said that he had made the right choice. And then Lin hit him. He told these men that he wasn't scum like them, and that he was about to teach them a lesson. The man Lin had hit was angry and was about to strike back. The girl began to shout for Lin to notice the attack. Suddenly his blow was stopped by the man Lin had seen before. The guy wiped the blood from under his nose and asked if another suicide bomber had appeared. He ordered his brothers to beat the crap out of these guys. It was going to be quite a battle. A massacre broke out. Lin didn't interfere yet. The man fought the rapists and said he'd see who could beat the crap out of who. Suddenly, one of the perpetrators struck hard and the man was defeated. The rapist laughed it off and said he had warned against messing with them. Suddenly, the girl ran up to the man and called his name Wang. She asked if he was okay. Wang replied that she had better run away because he could not beat them. Lin watched for a long time and suddenly began to applaud. The boy laughed and said that they had put on a wonderful show. The girl looked at him angrily and asked him who he thought he was. The girl looked at him angrily and asked him who he thought he was. Suddenly, one of the rapists ordered his dogs to knock out all his teeth. One of them ran up to the guy to strike, but Lin managed to dodge in a second and said he was too slow. Afterward, Lin threw him a few punches and told him that he was kind of sluggish and needed to lighten up a bit. Lin then switched to a brigand that was more massive than the previous one. However, he dealt with him even faster. Lin then looked at Wang and said that he hated scumbags like him. One asked what that meant. The girl rose from the ground and blocked the man with her, saying that she would not allow him to be harmed. Without thinking for long, Lin went for it. He passed through the girl and headed towards Wang. The girl couldn't understand what had suddenly happened and how he had done it. Lin stepped on Wang's arm and asked the girl if she wanted to know what was really going on here. The girl asked what he meant. Wang started shouting and called the girl's naming. He asked her for help. Lin smiled and told him that his calm was convincing. But he had overestimated his capabilities. Lin told him that Wang had hired those thugs and pretended to save her. The girl stood there puzzled. Van started yelling at her not to listen to him and that he was trying to trick her. A realization came to the girl, and she almost cried. After which, Lin poked his finger at one of the brigands and asked Wang that wasn't that one of his men. After that, Lin grabbed him by the scruff of the neck and asked if his man would mind if Lin cut off his arm. Lin grabbed Wang's arm and said that if it wasn't his man, then he would break his arm and he wouldn't say anything. Wang started yelling at the brigands why they weren't taking him away from him, just looking away. Lin smiled and said that he had finally confessed. In cried and said he was a terrible person. Van asked her to stop and told her it was just a misunderstanding. He grabbed her hand and asked her to give him a chance to explain. The robbers at this time asked what they should do next. One of them said that they had already been paid, 
so they could leave. Lin looked at them and said that it wouldn't be easy to leave. The guy pounced on them and began to beat them one by one. At this time, Wang ran after Ying and apologized. The girl said that she didn't want to see him anymore. Lin walked up to his house and noticed a courier delivering flowers to his wife. The guy was surprised by this. The courier left, and then Lin went to the door and asked Ching who the sender of those flowers was. The girl smiled and asked if he was jealous. Ching said she wouldn't tell who the flowers were from. Lin replied that it was no big deal, and that he just wanted to tell her that there was a bee sitting on the flowers. The girl said it scared her to death. She wondered why there were bees and roses. After all, there is no nectarium and little pollen in them. The girl threw the bouquet on the floor and a swarm of bees came from it Ching ran into the house, and asked for Lin to come inside too. Lin sensed the spirit energy, but it was so weak that he could barely detect it. Lin then came to the conclusion that there were people cultivating in this world. Lin remembered that in his previous life on earth, before he died, he received a message that his wife was waiting for him at home. Lin was at a party at the time, but after the message he decided to head home. On the way, he hit the shoulder of the man with the scar. Lin apologized to him, and the man replied that there was no problem. He then took out a knife and told Lin to put his life behind him. The man also said that King Yama wants Lin to die at three, and he already dared him to live to five. Lin was very frightened and asked him to stay away. The guys started yelling that they were on the main street, and he would call the police. After that, the guy rushed to run as fast as he could. However, he ran into an invisible wall and realized that no one could see or hear him. Lin tried to shout to the people on the other side of the wall, but no one paid any attention to him. Then a man stabbed his body with a knife. After that, Lin fell to the ground and barely opened his eyes. He heard that the surrounding people started shouting that here was a guy fainted and had a knife in his back. And now Lin wondered if his death was connected to his wife, and if she knew anything about it. The guy remembered that that man could generate barriers, which meant he was from a big clan. Except he didn't understand who needed to expend so much energy to kill an ordinary person. The next day came. 8.00 a.m. Suddenly Ching began to shout that it was time to get up and that he had forgotten what day it was. Lin jumped up and started mumbling that he remembered everything and that today was their anniversary. Ching started yelling for him to get up immediately and that it wasn't her fault he'd forgotten. Ching got very angry and started yelling that they had only been married for ten days and how could it be an anniversary. She told him to get up immediately and go to school. Lin pulled himself together and walked out. On the way he told himself that the previous semester had already passed and why shout so loudly. But the kid figured going back to the school and looking around there wasn't such a bad idea. On the way, Lin noticed a strange man. He wondered if it was a chi cultivator. The guy approached him and wished him a good day. The old man asked what was wrong and if he was interested in his practice of the art of tai chi. Lin replied that he knew something about it. The old man replied that young people who practice the art of tai chi are quite few in their time. He asked what Lin knew about this art. Lin replied that not much, but even that was enough to say that his style of tai chi was a little different from what the guy had seen and it was like he was missing something. The old man replied that he had been practicing the art of Tai Chi for over ten years, and no one had ever dared to make such a claim against him. Lin said that the principles of Tai Chi are about breathing, because it carries spiritual energy, but the old man's energy is blocked. The old man laughed and said that young people in their time do not understand at all how the world really works. Lin at this time thought that he didn't want to tell the old man, but his injuries had already blocked all eight special meridians for him. In this life, he had already reached his limit. Lin decided that if the old man didn't want to hear anything about it, he wouldn't say another word to him from now on. Suddenly, the old man grabbed the guy, and Lin used the technique to break free from him. The old man ordered his assistants to stand still. He said that Lin was a cultivator, and how did he not notice it right away? The old man walked over to Lin, put his hand on his shoulder and said that he still needed practice, and no matter how well he knew martial arts, he was still an ordinary person. Lin smiled and flashed fire. Then he asked the old man to take a closer look. Lin lifted all of the old man's helpers into the air. The old man shouted at them not to resist or attack. Lin lowered them to the ground and shouted for them to get lost. One of the assistants began to ask the old man if these were the spheres of development. The old man replied that it was a Jin Qi projection. 
but he didn't understand how such a thing was possible at his young age. Lin asked what else was the sphere of beginnings, and maybe he was referring to the black sphere. The old man asked to be allowed to tell him about it. The old man introduced himself and said his name was Hal, and he didn't mean to offend him at all. Lin introduced himself in response. The old man said that Lin was the most manly of all men, and his name sounded more prestigious than the others. Lin asked what he meant by that. The old man replied that without knowing the basics, nothing would work. He noticed that Lin was surprised when he heard about cultivation levels, and realized that the guy didn't know anything about it. Lin realized that it seemed like the cultivation on earth was very different from that in the heavenly realm, and it was because of this that his previous cultivation here was limited. Lin then told the old man that the master had trained him since he was a child but had never told him about the theory. The old man explained that there was nothing complicated about understanding cultivation levels. They develop their innate chi, that's why they are called cultivators. He also added that there were six major realms in cultivation, each of which was divided into three minor levels. Basic, intermediate, and supreme. Lin realized that it looked like he would have to reach the immortality realm level on earth in order to return to the heavenly realm and take revenge. Then the guy asked the old man what level he thought Lin was at now. The old man replied that he thought he was at the basic level of the development sphere. Lin realized that it turns out that his fourth cultivation layer in the heaven realm was equal to the base level of the cultivation realm on earth. However, the old man couldn't understand how Lin possessed the cultivation chi of the initiate realm, being only at the level of the development realm. Astonishing. Of his three bodyguards, Two are at the highest level of the spirituality realm, just one level below Lin, and the third is at the basic level of the development realm, just like Lin. In Jiang City, they are some of the best cultivators, but even they couldn't even withstand one hit from Lin. The old man couldn't stop admiring him. Lin pondered that whether it was because he had originally started training with the spiritual qi in the heaven realm, which was much stronger than the innate qi on earth. The old man told the guy that he wasn't going to beg him for his secret and asked him to accept the invitation to join the Chu family. Lin replied that he didn't want any faction. Lin didn't know how many and which cultivators in Jiang City belonged to the Chu family faction. Therefore, until he found out the information, he wouldn't make any hasty decisions. The old man asked him not to refuse so easily and offered to take a look at one of their family's two greatest treasures Chu, Melting Spirit Jade. It is one of the greatest cultivation tools in the heaven realm. It increases the cultivation speed. Lin was greatly surprised when he saw the melting spirit jade. He realized that there were such treasures on earth as well. Lin thought that right now, he could merge with the great emperor's energy very quickly. Lin told the old man that if he could get his hands on such a precious treasure, it turns out that their faction also had more powerful cultivators than him and asked why the old man was calling him to them. The old man replied that he would tell him the truth. He said that recently, there were fewer and fewer strong cultivators, and there were only cultivators of the sphere of beginnings left in the city. Lin then asked how he could help them if the old man said that he was only at the basic level of the development sphere. The old man replied that with his talents and the resources of the Chu family, reaching the realm of endeavor is a matter of time. And as for the realm of transformation— it's not impossible either. Lin replied that the offer was good, but like he said, he didn't need a faction. Then the old man said goodbye and said that he could keep the jade as a token of their friendship. The old man was returning home and one of the bodyguards said that this jade was given to him for his recovery, and why he gave it away, and reminded him that the Chu family would probably investigate it. The old man replied that the Zong family didn't give him this jade to heal him but they just wanted to charge him more money while he was still alive. The old man also added that he would not be able to protect their family. The bodyguard replied that giving the jade to the child was foolish and any family would be able to take it away from him. The old man said that if the jade was taken away, it would serve as proof that he and his master were not worthy of the Chu family's support. The bodyguard now realized that the old man wanted to test their fighting abilities and see the results. The old man said that it could be assumed that this child's master was strong enough to challenge their family. So it would be a good idea to have someone test his strength for them. Lin at this time thought that the old man had helped him a lot, and the melting spirit jade would make cultivation a lot easier. Now Lin realized that he owed him a debt. However, he didn't understand what the card was for, or why the old man had given it to him. Finally, Lin reached the university. 
After ten years in the celestial realm, he never thought he would return to such a familiar place. Lin approached the entrance, and suddenly someone shouted to the guy. Lin turned around and saw a group of students. One of the guys said he didn't think Lin had the guts to come back to campus. The other two guys giggled and expected a good show. The girl lowered her eyes in embarrassment. Lin looked at the girl carefully and remembered that it was Jean. The guy had already forgotten that they were his old classmates. Suddenly, one of the guys started yelling for Lin not to look at Jean like that and grabbed Lin by the shoulder. The guy looked at him menacingly and told him that Jean was already his girlfriend and not to think about her anymore. Lin brushed his hand off his shoulder and asked him if he hadn't already allowed him to be with her. The guy got really pissed off. He was thinking at this time that Lin was still pretending to be indifferent, but he would soon have to learn the reality. The guy's name is Chi. He invited Lin to a party that's for graduates and asked her to forget all the grudges. The guys standing nearby laughed and said that they were going to a high-level club, and with such clothes, Lin wouldn't be able to enter. Unexpectedly, Jean turned to Lin and said that there would be many celebrities at the party, and if he came, it might help him in the future. Lin replied that he understood her good intentions. She shouted that they were going to a favorite place in the city, and if he didn't have the courage, it was better not to come. Lin smiled and replied that if someone invites him, there is no reason to refuse. And he added that he was the kind of person who liked free food the most. She was happy with this answer and said that he would be waiting for him in Ting's room in an establishment that is like heaven on earth. The guys got into their cars, and the girl with them, and they drove off. Lin thought a little about what had happened and decided that it was worth going to this party. Evening came, and Lin came to that very paradise on earth. The guy didn't understand how it was different from the wreckage compared to the mansion he lived in. Lin walked inside and was greeted by the staff. People were lined up in rows and immediately greeted him. One of the men asked the guy if he had a reservation. Lin replied that he had been invited to Tin's room. The man said that Ting's room had already been booked by Mr. Chi and asked to see the invitation card. Lin wondered what invitation card he was talking about. Suddenly, an unknown man approached the guy and said that they were waiting for him. He asked the concierge to show him to his room. Suddenly, Swan, the second son of the Lee family from the top four landowning families in Xi'an, entered the establishment, and Fei, the biggest shareholder in Xi'an. Lin then asked why they didn't need invitation cards. Swan smiled and said that he was a VIP customer and didn't need to book anything. Fei asked who the hobo looking man was, and she asked the manager that now anyone who wants to can enter this hotel. Swan reassured the girl and told her to ignore the strangers and handed the man a map. Lin looked at the map in surprise. The concierge looked at Lin and said that if he didn't have an invitation card, he should leave. Then Lin dug into his pockets and found a map. He held it out to the concierge and told him to look at it, as it was exactly the same as Mr. Swan's. The man gave a surprised look and thought that Lin had decided he could pull out any map and enter their hotel. But once he looked at her, he couldn't hide his surprise. The man said that he didn't think Lin was a black premium VIP card holder of the Chu Corporation. Swan watched this and told Fei that she seemed to have underestimated the stranger. After all, he has the highest VIP customer card that the master didn't even give him. Fei looked at him carefully and found him quite interesting. The concierge at the time was apologizing profusely to the guy. Eventually he was let through and Lin went to his room. He went to the door and heard Chi say that after today if his friends have any business problems they can go to him. One of the guys replied to him that he would gladly rely on him. And asked Chi that didn't that Lin guy dare to come? Chi laughed and replied that that redneck was most likely left at the entrance. After that, Chi laughed loudly and said that he seemed to have forgotten that Lin didn't have an invitation card. Unexpectedly, Lin entered the room and said that he was a little late. Chi didn't think that this boy would dare to come. Then he told the boy that if he was late, his punishment would be to drink with him. Lin took the bottle in his hand, looked inside and replied that of course, only there was one but. The guy smiled and threw the bottle away. Chi was surprised and said that this wine was worth twenty thousand. And asked if Lin could make up for that loss. Chi was approached by one of the men and told that the hotel was willing to reimburse all losses for Mr. Lin. Chi replied that there was no need for that and that he knew that heaven on earth belonged to the Chu Corporation, but his family couldn't afford to offend the Chu family. She added that Lin was interfering with their dinner, and he hoped they could get him out. 
One of Chi's friends added that that was true, and Lin probably didn't have an invitation and had sneaked in illegally. Then the man smiled and replied that because of Mr. Lin's status, he didn't have enough power to kick him out. She then replied that the man was wrong. After all, what status could a mere bastard from their university have? The man replied that they were perfectly aware of who Mr. Lin was. Suddenly their conversation was interrupted by a girl screaming. She was calling for help. She realized it was Jean, as she had just gone to the restroom. An unknown crowd of guys harassed the girl. Jean shouted for them to let her go. But the guys paid no attention to it. Suddenly, Chi appeared and started yelling how the pieces of shit from the street dared to touch his girlfriend. One of the unknown men turned around and asked Chi that did he really want to die because of his girl. She was joined by his friends, and they approached a group of these bandits. Chi started talking to the leader of their gang, and said that he had seen a lot of trash like them, and they'd better let the girl go. Then the ringleader smiled and said that his name was Lei Bao, and it had been a long time since he had beaten people, for every passerby now dared to instruct him. Chi's face immediately changed, he was covered in sweat, and questioned the guy if he was really Lei Bao. Lei threw a punch right into Chi's stomach and replied that yes, he was that Lei. Chi flew backwards from such a blow. Chi lay on the floor and began to apologize, saying that he didn't know who Lei was. Chi's friends at this time were discussing amongst themselves that to insult Lei Bao, the son of Lan, the boss of the biggest triad in the city, was simply to end the Chi family. Lin was standing at the back of the crowd at this time, and was just observing what was going on, when suddenly someone demanded to bring that guy in the back. Lin realized that it seemed to be about him. Lin then asked if they were really talking about him. Lei replied that if he didn't obey, he would break his arms and legs. After a while, the man came to the general manager and said that there was a problem. The manager asked what was wrong. The guards along with the manager came to the scene. The battered Lei shouted for them to catch him that piece of trash immediately. The manager asked Lin if he was okay. The guy replied that he didn't mean to get involved but that's what happened. The man then told Lei that Mr. Lin was an important high-level person in the Chu Corporation, and was not someone he could offend. The people around him were immediately surprised at Lin's status, and realized that he was just trash. The friends picked up Lei and led him away, but the guy shouted that he wouldn't forget what happened today. Lin hurriedly left the place as it was all very annoying. Suddenly, he felt a very familiar aura. It was the same man with the scar. Lin overheard him telling someone that he had already taken care of the Xing family, and that Lin was also his hand in the beginning. After receiving some instructions, the man with the scar began to walk away. Lin was very shocked, and didn't think he would see him there. The guy decided to follow him. He saw a man get into a car and drive off. Lin got into a cab and asked to follow this car. The driver informed the man with the scar that they were being tailed. The scar replied that they were probably families from the hidden world who had overestimated their abilities, and ordered the driver to keep driving. At this time, Lei ordered his men to find out everything about Lin. One of the subordinates replied that this child was being covered up by the Chu family. That's when Lei hit him, and said that isn't the Chu family a gas processing family, and there is a patron behind his family and that's enough to bring down the Chu family. After that, Lei called his father and asked if he could become a gas processor. After the conversation, Lei said he would get to this guy soon. At this time, Lin, following the scarred man, arrived at Mount Wuling. He had no idea what kind of place it was. The cab driver left the guy there and thought to himself that today's youth really knows how to have fun, run up to the mountain to do obscene things. Apparently the boyfriend is waiting. Lin couldn't understand why this scarred man and his men had come to Wulin Mountain, which was in a wasteland. The scarred man at this time told his man that he had business to attend to and would leave the tail on him. Lin couldn't resist his curiosity and decided he had to see what they were doing there. The guy followed them on their heels, but suddenly realized that they were no longer visible. Suddenly someone asked him if he was looking for something. Lin didn't expect such a turn. The man asked how dare he chase after them, and did he really come for his death. Lin wrestled the weapon away from him. The man said that he was quite skillful, but added that the Hidden World family shouldn't think that they didn't know their plan. The man also said that Lin had the courage since he was following them to sniff out their secrets. The man ordered the guy to immediately tell which family had sent him up, and if he told, the man would let him go. And then Lin remembered that the scarred man had mentioned the Xing family in Paradise Corner 
so he decided to say that they were the ones who had sent him over. The man then asked why he was following them instead of joining them. Lin replied that he wanted to ask something of the man with the scar. The man suddenly attacked the guy and said he'd better ask him that in hell. Lin noticed that there was something unusual about this person. The guy said that he wasn't an ordinary base-level expert. Lin assessed the man's skills in combat and realized that he was of a high level. The guy knew that the man was two levels above him, and there would be trouble this time. Lin realized that this man could not be an ordinary expert. In the state Lin was in, even with a spiritual blessing, it would be difficult to defeat a supreme emperor. The boy gathered all his strength into a fist to strike at least some blow. At that moment, a man came up to him and offered him to surrender. Lin threw a punch, but realized that he could only use the power of jade on the ground. The man told the guy that they had nothing in common except socializing with the families of the hidden realm, and he even scared him. The man looked at the jade that was in Lin's hand and realized what kind of power it was. Lin advised him to pretend to be weak and die. Lin brought the jade into action. He knew that it was possible to release the Supreme Emperor now. The guy applied a lightning strike, and it did a lot of damage. Lin didn't know how many people were behind the scarred master, so he decided it was better for him to leave first. The guy came home and couldn't he understand what was going on. Could it be that the aura of the spiritual emperor in his body was connected with the chi of this world? And could it be the reason that the practice of refining went much faster? Lin didn't understand. If these two powers couldn't exist together there, would he be able to improve on earth? Probably only now the spiritual power is being infused into the jade, so the spiritual energy gives birth to new abilities. Lin understood that as long as the jade worked, the Supreme Emperor's spirit and she energy would lift the restrictions so that he could take advantage of them. So the guy decided to make a breakthrough, he knew he had to sit with his eyes closed and in deep thoughtfulness quietly ponder the god, gritting his teeth and grasping the kunlun with both hands. Using practice, the guy managed to reach the hidden realm, and it made him very happy. Lin decided that possessing the power of dual refinement, for breaking through the far border, there was nothing more to fear. The guy thought he could recover sooner after connecting with Jade to free the Supreme Emperor from his chains. Unexpectedly, he overcame one boundary with the Jade but that one shattered in an instant. Without a medium-strength weapon that could combine aura and innate strength, Lin could no longer practice it. Therefore, he decided to ask the cultivator families. The guy went downstairs and saw that his wife was asleep. Lin noticed a note in her hand. The note was a plea to the girl that her family was going through a hard time, and she needed to find the blood of a five-year-old Raishir heaven and earth. Lin knew he didn't care about his past life, but now it was time to catch up so the guy decided to take it upon himself. Lin called the cab to the address given in the letter. However, the address clearly spelled out the house number, but the guy didn't see it. Suddenly the guy's attention was attracted by a black-tinted car. A man was pushed out of the car, saying that he wanted to enter the house uninvited. When the man fell, they shouted after him that if it happened again, he would not get off easy and would walk away with broken ribs. Lin didn't waste any time and approached the man. The guy asked where house number 58 was. The man was greatly surprised, and asked the lad that did he really want to go to the fog house. Lin held out his hand to the man to pick him up off the ground and said that apparently he knew where to go. The man replied that he would tell him in confidence. The man began to say that a fog house is not the safest place for a person to end up. Suddenly, the man began to use force and said that he was not a weak person. Then Lin realized that he was a cultivator and quite strong. The man introduced himself, and said his name was Lo. He told the boy that he could show him the way to the misty house. Lin thanked him and they went on their way. On the way, the boy was surprised and asked if this was the house. Lo then said that this house has no fixed location. It was named so because it is near the 58th lantern of the alley. The main lantern is the key to the misty house. Lin was greatly surprised and asked how to use it. Luo replied that the easiest way was to influence it externally, and then light it. Lo said that the farther they went in, the brighter the street lights burned, and the house was there too. Lin began to apply the technique, and said it was the best way to light the lantern and get into the house. Lo didn't understand how that was possible. After a while, a man in a black-tinted car asked the guys if they had lit the lantern. The man then said that he would escort them to the misty house. Luo couldn't believe his eyes that Hong had personally arrived to escort them, 
and realized that Lin was really amazing. Lin asked the man if he could take Lo with him. The man replied that if Lin wanted to, the misty house would allow it. Lin took Luo and the man put them in the car. However, Lin didn't understand why they were blindfolded. Lo explained that it was the usual rule of the mist house not to reveal his position to strangers. At this time, in a bamboo grove on Zhulin Mountain, a battle was taking place between unknown men. The guy who was lying on the ground knew that judging from his opponent's ability, he was somewhere at the sixth level. The guy didn't expect that someone could kill him in the same world. The man at this time felt that Jade was somewhere in the north, and he should check. The man set off. He said it didn't matter at all where he ran to, for it would be a dead end for him. Meanwhile, Lin and Luo arrived at the Misty House. Luo said that he had only heard about it from some people, but now he could see it for himself. Lin noticed that the mountain was completely enveloped by clouds and fog, but it didn't look bad at all. The man at this time asked Lin to give him the invitations and the man would inform Ms. Yun of his arrival. Lin didn't expect this, for Cheng's letter didn't mention the invitation. Luo at this time was telling the guy to hurry up and get the invitation, because he definitely had it. The man thought that Lin certainly wouldn't have come to the house uninvited, and it had been a long time since he had seen such a young man who could light thirty-five lanterns. The man then said that since Lin didn't have an invitation, they could take a walk in the garden for now and he would inform Miss Yun to make a decision. During the walk, Lo asked Lin if he knew what treasures were in this house. Lin asked if he meant the 500-year-old racer blood. Lo was surprised and asked if Lin really wanted to get it. Lin noticed that the guy's voice seemed surprised. Lo tells him that it is a valuable thing in this world. And almost all of Chu's family came after him in addition to Chu's family, and he is afraid that it won't work out. Suddenly the boys came upon a crowd of men. At the head of them stood Min, the guard of the misty house. The guard turned to Lo and reminded him that he had told him not to appear in the house again. Lo asked what he was going to do. Min smiled and said he would just break his arm. Then Luo answered him that this time Hong would intercede for him, and it would be better for them not to get involved. Min laughed and asked if Brother Hong would intercede for him. Luo replied that he misunderstood, as he was not talking about himself, but about Brother Lin who is a guest of the Misty House. Min laughed and said that he had never heard of such a family, and ordered his men to show the power of their blades. Luo told Lin to be careful as this technique belongs to the Misty House village. As the aura blades flew at Lin, he thought about the fact that these blades were made for high-level fighters, but people like the guards couldn't control them properly. The guards tried to kill the guy, but Lin shouted to them that he was about to show them what was really called wielding a spirit weapon. Lin used the technique to direct the blades in the opposite direction. They couldn't understand how this was even possible. Min couldn't understand if it was an innate ability. Suddenly, a woman's voice was heard, ordering everyone to stop. Ten minutes before, Han had come to Ms. Yun's chambers and announced Lin and Luo's arrival. Yun wondered how an ordinary person could light thirty-five lanterns at once. Yun asked if Hong had gotten details about the guy. The man said he only knew his last name, but there were no families with that last name in the city. Then Yun suggested that maybe Lin was a foreigner. The girl said that she wanted to arrange a meeting with this young handsome man. So Ms. Yun arrived just as the guards were fighting with Lin. The guy asked her if she was Ms. Yoon. Suddenly, Yoon and Lin remembered that they had already seen each other at the Heaven on Earth Club. It was a very unexpected meeting. Min asked Ms. Yoon if she knew this guy. Yoon replied that she had met him at the Chu family home. Min said they caught the guy and wouldn't let him near the house. Yoon replied that it was a total disgrace and if it wasn't for Lin's mercy, they would be dead by now. Miss ordered the guard to go get fifty lashes to apologize to Mr. Lin. Min replied that he was simply frightened by the unusual machinery he was seeing for the first time since he had lived in the house. Hong reminded the guard of the house rules, and told him that if he forgot them again, he would receive fifty lashes. Miss Yun said that as an apology, she is giving Lin an invitation to the pavilion to prepare for tomorrow's auction. After hearing this, Lul was almost speechless for he knew that the pavilion was the most highly qualified place to treat the four most famous families. Yun said that the Chu family hadn't arrived, so the first of the four pavilions was free. And she also allowed Luo to stay there too since he's Lin's friend. Luo explained to the lad that being in this pavilion offered many privileges in the fog house, and he had no reason to refuse the invitation. As night fell, the boys checked into the pavilion. 
Lin noticed that Luo was going somewhere. The guy realized that Luo really had a problem. So Lin decided to follow him and find out his purpose for staying in the misty house. Luo noticed that Lin was watching him and suddenly Ms. Yun appeared. She asked Lin where he was going in the middle of the night. Lin replied that he just decided to take a walk around the neighborhood. Yun pulled the guy to her and asked how about letting her accompany him to avoid having a bad time. Lin replied that it would be unnecessary. Miss asked not to be misunderstood as she came on business and invited the boy to come to the room to talk. They went to the chambers. Lin asked the girl why she put her hand on his neck. Yun asked why he didn't like it. The guy said it wouldn't work. Yun asked why Lin was so puzzled. The guy replied that she didn't understand why Miss pretends to be so shameless when she isn't, and asked what the real issue was. Yoon replied that he was indeed an extraordinary person, and suggested that we talk about business. Regarding the order of the main four families in the city and the three main groups of the Yoon family, the second day came. Lin was invited to follow to the auction. However, Ms. Yun's entourage didn't understand why Lin thought it was inappropriate. The auction began. The prices sounded not small, 1,100,000, 1,200,000, 2 million. When the Lin family bet 3 million, everyone was outraged at how this was possible and who dared to outbid the Yun family. There was a commotion in the hall, and people realized that the bet was placed by a young man named Lin. After a few seconds, Lin raised the bet again to 3,100,000. Everyone noticed that he was openly competing with the Yun family. No one could figure out who this Mr. Lin was. At this time, Mr. Ting, the second son of the Yun family and part-time older brother of Miss Yun, was denounced that Lin was the guy who lit the 35 lanterns and gained access to the pavilion. Mr. Ting was interested in this young man. The subordinate also said that the Misty House had given Lin a special invitation. Tin said he was very interested in looking at the invitation. The subordinate handed him the package. Tin read the invitation and remarked that it seems that this kid is very important to the Misty House since it provides the best conditions for him. The subordinate asked the master if he would still bid. Tin replied that that was enough for today. The man informed the auction that the Yun family was out, and Mr. Ting surrendered. The people around him realized that this Lin was very powerful. The previous night, there was a conversation between Ms. Yun and the guy in which the girl asked if he needed anything other than special items for enhancement. The guy replied that he would take Raysher blood. Then the girl told him that he would owe him one favor at the Misty House. At the auction at that time, everyone was discussing who Mr. Lin was. Miss Yun congratulated Lin that he had managed to get Raysher blood on the third try for 3,100,000. The auction was officially closed, and the guests were invited to go to the celebration hall for dinner. Lin thanked Ms. Yun for her help, for he had finally obtained the Raysher blood. However, the guy was embarrassed and asked if he could ask for something else. Lin explained that he didn't have that much money right now, and could the girl lend him some money. Yun grinned and said that he wanted Raysher blood, so she gave it to him. Lin took note of this, and promised that his debt would be repaid. The girl put her hand on the guy's shoulder and said that it was already evening and maybe they should go out to dinner. Lin thanked Ms. Yun for inviting him and said that he would never forget it. The girl replied that he was very nice. However, Lin was undaunted by the thought that he should go to the attic to make sure. The girl asked him what was wrong. Lin replied that everything was fine and asked her to go to the party hall first, as he still had business to attend to. Ms. Yun agreed and said she would wait for him there. Lin had been thinking all this time about how tired he was of this girl. Lin went about his business, and noticed that, like the old loft structure, it was a matrix. But who made it? Was it really him? Lin didn't realize if this energy could resonate with him. The boy knew he had made a really good deal. Lin began to apply the technique again. It was a dual-powered developmental technique that would help him rise to the seventh level to reach the boundaries of the spiritual realm. The guy couldn't understand what was going on. Could it be that rising to the seventh level required loosening the emperor's shackles in order to gain an improvement in ability? Lin turned to the combination of yin and yang heaven and earth, and asked for his eyes to be opened. The celestial eye technique allows one to see traces of energy usage, allowing one to track the caster. Luo at this time reasoned that right now everyone was at a celebratory dinner, so they had weak defenses, and when they relaxed, he would be able to take the sacred relics away. Suddenly Lo noticed Lin and asked why he didn't go to the feast. 
Lin asked the boy if he had really been following him all this time. Lo asked him to calm down or he wouldn't guarantee his safety. Lin asked him if he was sure of what he was saying. Luo asked Lin if she really thought he was that good. After all, he's just a handsome guy living off Ms. Yoon. And maybe the thirty-five lanterns didn't light up because of him at all. Lin smiled and told the guy that he had some pretty audacious thoughts. And since that was the case, he would show him his strength. Lin used the dagger with aura. Luo didn't expect this at all. Lin walked up to him and said that he was too weak. Lin used one technique after another, then pinned the guy against a tree and asked if he still thought Lin was weak. Luo began to apologize and said that he was wrong and that Lin was really very strong. Then Lin demanded to know what he was up to. Lo replied that he just wanted to get back everything that belonged to him. Lin didn't understand what he was talking about. Luo explained that he was supposed to be the young master of his family but he was framed and ended up leaving his home as a stranger. And now he wants to borrow the power of the Miao family to return to his family. Then Lin grabbed the guy by the scruff of his neck and said that he would help him and take him to Ms. Yun. Lo asked him to wait, and said that if Lin let him go, he was willing to take away the bloodstone meant for the Miao people. Lin knew that the bloodstone was the greatest treasure for training. Many people were willing to tear it off with their hands. Bloodstone is a unique gemstone that contains a large amount of energy. It is used as a quenching vessel of magic. Lin then said that he was willing to make a deal. He ordered Lo to stay by his side at all times until they discovered the bloodstone, and added that on top of all that, to let him go, he needed to defeat the Miao family. Lin asked if he had any objections. Luo said no. Afterward, Lin ordered the boy to follow him to the celebration dinner. Luo agreed, and they arrived at the celebration hall. Walking his way, Lin happened to witness a conversation in which a man was telling the girl that he had failed to get the blood of erasure this time. The girl replied that she would tell her father the truth. Lin immediately realized that he heard a rather familiar voice. Lin peered over and saw his wife there. The man said it was about their cooperation with a large organization. Ching replied that she herself would be responsible for it. Lin couldn't believe his eyes and ears and it seemed rather interesting to him, for there was still much he didn't know about his wife. After that, the guy went to the celebration hall, taking Luo with him. And at dinner, Ting realized that the Lin San who had taken the Reishi's blood was that young man Lin. Ting didn't realize if the Black Dragon Church hadn't destroyed him. Miss Yun raised her glass at this time and voiced a toast thanking them for attending the auction. Miss Yun drank a glass and those present realized that if the girl drank the wine, then it was really good. Unexpectedly, Ting stood up and said that he suggested that Mr. Lin raise a glass and make a toast. The people present supported this idea. Lin replied that he was refusing. Everyone around him was indignant. How dare he refuse Master Ting's offer? The Yun family's bodyguard told the guy that he would die today. Lin replied that it depended on his professionalism. The bodyguard replied that he would not waste much of his energy and would not call out to the Black Panther. The bodyguard attacked Lin, however, with one hand movement, the guy threw him back. After that, Lin came up to him and said that his master had not given him an order, and asked him why he dog started unleashing his hands. Ting at this time couldn't understand why this loser was so strong. Miss Yun also blurted out her thoughts and realized that she had made the right choice. Ting turned to Mr. Lin and said that with such skills— one could join the Yun family faction and achieve a lot. Miss Yun explained to her brother that Mr. Lin is a distinguished visitor to her home, so she was truly sorry for the altercation. Tin wondered why she didn't keep an eye on her guest and let this happen. Yun turned to her brother and said it was all a misunderstanding. Ting said that today, he saw young Master Lin's skills with his own eyes. And now he was bowing down, but if they were bound by fate— they would definitely meet. Ting walked away and thought about how he still had plenty of time to play with him. Miss Yun realized that her brother wouldn't let gentlemen go to Lin so easily. Miss Yun left, and Lin went after her, while telling Luo that if he didn't come back, he knew how to leave. Yun told the guy that he had hurt her big brother today, and he should be more careful. Lin asked what was the matter. Miss explained that he should be afraid of more than just her brother Tin but the guy replied that he was never afraid of anyone. Then the girl said that there are also Haluan. They are popularly called the Black Dragon. It's a secret underground organization. They have repeatedly participated in the assassinations of cultivator mentors. 
It's an extremely dangerous organization. The girl also added that her other brother is the master of the Black Dragon, and they are quite close, so the guy should be careful. Also, Ms. Yoon added that you should be especially careful with someone who has facial scars, one on the face, one on the forehead, and one on the nose. After hearing this, Lin seemed to lose his temper and told Ms. Yoon to tell her the man's name. The girl said his name was Lao. Lin realized that if Lao was the one who had killed him at that time, then he could take revenge on him and absorb his chi. Suddenly, Ms. Yun asked to let go of her as she was in pain. Lin took his hands away and apologized, explaining that he was a bit agitated. The girl put her hands on the guy's chest and replied that everything was fine. But Lin took her hands away and said that he was married. The guy also added that he has important news to tell her. Lin told her that someone was going to come tonight to steal the treasure of the mountain villa. The girl asked if he was sure of what he said. Lin confirmed and said that someone wanted to seize the relics of the Miao family. However, Ms. Yun didn't understand how Lin could know all this. Lin said that he knew what she was thinking right now. He explained that before he went to the party, he had heard something strange. And that Lin was going to attack him. But he managed to escape. Ms. Yun asked what the man looked like. Lin replied that he was wearing a mask and couldn't see his face. Then the girl asked if Mr. Lin would like to help her catch the man. Lin smiled and replied that he would be happy to help. Night had fallen. Lin, together with Luo, came to the treasury. Lo talked about how he was very afraid. But Lin reassured him and said that they could not touch them. Also, Lin said that if he doesn't get the bloodstones so Lo doesn't even think he'll be able to escape. Lin asked Luo to look ahead. The guy noticed two unfamiliar guys walking towards the treasury. That was Lin's plan. The guys were discussing at this time that somehow it was all weird and very quiet in this place, so they should be careful. Just then, they came across Ms. Yoon along with her guards. The girl ordered the thieves to be captured immediately. The guys started fighting back and one of them decided to deal with Ms. Yoon first. He attacked the girl. Unexpectedly, Lin appeared and told the thief that if he wanted to hurt Ms. Yoon, he should deal with him first. The thief replied that he was at the peak stage of level 6, and Lin wouldn't be able to defeat him. Lin asked that now because he was so confident, he was going to attack head-on. The thief replied that since Lin insisted, he was ready to attack. Lin replied that he should waste no time and attack. The thief immediately rushed into action. Lin prepared for the clash and used the heavenly thunder palm technique. Miss Yun was greatly frightened and began to worry about Mr. Lin. However, Lin threw the thief back so hard that he flew up to the sky. The thief's partner couldn't understand what had happened. Fear overcame him, but he ran up to his partner and asked if he was okay or not. The thief was embittered. He realized that Lin was at the innate realm level and had very strong chi. Also, the thief knew that he couldn't defeat him. His partner told him that Lin was too strong and they should run away. After these words, the thief began to rummage through his pockets. He took out two orbs, which he threw towards Lin. A misty smoke appeared and the thieves managed to escape. Lin immediately turned to Ms. Yun and said that he would catch them. Yun replied to tell him to be careful. The thieves were on their way, one of them asking the other how he was feeling. The latter replied that he was fine. Suddenly Lin appears, he stood in their way and said that now they will definitely not be able to escape. The thief asked that Lin let him and his brother go, and he would definitely repay him. Lin replied that he had promised Ms. Yun to catch them and deliver them to her. Just as suddenly, an unknown person suddenly appeared and attacked the guy. The opponent saw that Lin was so young but so strong. He asked that Lin stay out of it or he would kill him. After saying that, he took out a substance from his pocket, threw it, and they disappeared again. Lin was about to run after them again, but he remembered that Luo was still in the Zhu pavilion. At that time, a fire broke out at the gate. Ms. Yun asked her men what happened. She was told that there had been an explosion at the gate. Miss thought it was very strange. Lin suddenly appeared and asked Miss what was wrong. Yun said that the gate of the mountain villa of the Yunwu had been blown open and they had sent people to check. She also asked about the two thieves. Lin said that he almost caught them, but suddenly the masked man took them away. And when Lin wanted to catch up with them, there was a huge explosion. Ms. Yun asked the guy if he was hurt. Suddenly, a guard came running in and reported that the gate of the mountain villa of Yunwu was partially damaged, but there were no casualties. The guard also added that after a thorough investigation, 
they discovered that several pieces of blood jade in the treasury were missing. Lin heard about the blood jade and remembered that it was exactly what Luo had promised. The guy didn't want to believe that it was his handiwork. He promised himself that if he tried to escape, he would find him. Lin applied the heaven's eye technique, and he could see traces that an ordinary human eye would not be able to detect. Lin told the guard that he didn't think it was that easy there, and added that he would go take a look around. Ms. Yun asked him to be careful. Lin asked her not to worry and got down to business. The guard asked Ms. if he needed to follow Lin. Yun replied that it was not necessary, and he was not involved. Lin found Lo at this time and asked him if he was really waiting for him. Luo smiled and said that it looked like he had made the right choice. Lin asked him what his purpose was. Lo apologized to him for what he had done. Lin was very surprised and asked him if he was the one who blew up the gate. Lo replied that it was him. Lin then asked why it was for him. Luo replied that it was because he couldn't give him the promised jade, and the only way was to steal it. Luo also said that apart from that, the Mountain Villa Treasure Pavilion was strictly protected, and he could only use this method to attract their attention. Lin was surprised and asked how he still managed to do it. Luo replied that although he wasn't very strong, but while everyone was busy, he was able to enter the pavilion and pick up something. Lin replied that he didn't expect him to do that. After that, Luo took out pieces of blood jade from his pocket and held them out to the guy. Lin looked at him and replied that he didn't need it anymore. Luo almost fell to the ground from what he heard. Lo asked him why he was giving up something he coveted so much. Lin replied that he didn't like stolen goods. Luo was very angry at himself for not being able to fulfill what he had promised, and said that if Lin wanted to help him return to his family, he would definitely provide him with unlimited resources. Lin asked the guy why he had come to him specifically, and why on earth he should help him. Lo replied that because Lin was the strongest and most promising person he had ever seen, and if Lin is willing to help, then when Luo becomes the young master of the family, he is willing to provide all the resources of the family and follow him. After saying that, Lin extended his hand to the guy and said that since that was the case, Luo would follow him from today onwards. Also, Lin reminded him that if he betrayed him, Lin would take his life. Lo took a deep breath, and Lin asked him what was wrong. Lo revealed that the Miao now consider him a sworn enemy, and he is afraid of that. Lin replied that it was indeed a problem, but he convinced the boy that he wouldn't let him get hurt. Lo didn't know how to thank him. Lin replied that they would soon get even. After that, Lin said that before he could defeat the Miao people, Luo should tell everything about them. Lin glanced at his watch and said that it was too late, and Luo should find a place to hide tonight and they would meet at the Yuan Shan Cafe tomorrow. Lin also reminded him to remember to return the blood jade. Luo replied that he understood and would do the right thing. At this time in the pavilion, Ms. Yun had a general meeting with her people. She asked Uncle Hong where the guards were when all this happened. Hong replied that he takes full responsibility for the case, and asked if they should check Mr. Lin's background. Ms. Yun seemed to become furious after hearing this, she started shouting that she trusted Mr. Lin, and he was not involved in this case. Hong replied that he had taken that into consideration. Unexpectedly, Lin appeared. Ms. Yun immediately asked him if he had managed to find something. Lin apologized to her, and informed her that he could not find any useful evidence. Ms. Yun replied that everything was fine and there was nothing to worry about. Lin defiantly glanced at his watch, and said that it was getting late, and he should go home. Yun replied that it was the right thing to do since Lin is a family man, and she will no longer take up his time. Miss Yun also asked her uncle to bring the blood of the Holy Spirit, and gave it to Mr. Lin. Hong handed it to Mr. Lin, and the boy thanked Miss Yun for her warm welcome and pleasant time. The girl asked him to be careful on the way home. Meanwhile, the two thieves and the masked man were hiding in the cave. They were discussing the fact that Lo had dared to betray them, and they should kill him. The masked man told one of them that the people who were chasing them were very strong. The thief replied that if it weren't for Lin's presence, their plan would have worked. He decided that he had to send someone to find out about Mr. Lin, or else his existence would be a problem for them. Meanwhile, at the Move family villa, the head of the family organized a meeting to discuss one thing, namely, the blood of the Holy Spirit auctioned by the Zhangzhou Pavilion. The father asked his daughter Cheng what the result of the auction was. Cheng replied that they didn't get anything. Then her father asked her what happened. 
The girls said that the second master of the Yun family was also involved. Her father got up from his chair and asked menacingly, Did he take her away? Cheng replied that no, she was taken away by a family with the surname Lin. Father angrily asked what kind of family this was. Suddenly, Cheng's younger brother, named Feng, said that he thought Cheng had just made it all up. Cheng started yelling that she wasn't lying. Feng said that Cheng's business ability deteriorated after she married Lin and picked up on his loser behavior. Cheng shouted that she wouldn't let him talk about her husband like that. Feng replied that if he had known she would fail, he would have done it himself. Suddenly, father slapped the table and ordered everyone to shut up. Father told Ching that if she didn't return the Holy Spirit blood, she would voluntarily divorce Lin. Ching started asking her father to trust her again. Father got angry and said that he wouldn't do it again. He was tired of seeing this garbage, and he didn't understand what she found in him. Ching didn't know what she should do to change her father's mind. Just as suddenly, the door to the room opened. The guy apologized to his father-in-law for being late. Ching couldn't believe her eyes. She couldn't believe that her husband was standing in front of her. Father was shocked and even pleasantly surprised. Phone gave him a disdainful look and said that he never thought they would be visited by this loser. Ching looked angrily at her brother and asked how dare he talk like that. Phone replied that he was not wrong in his remarks. Phone looked at Lin and said he had no business being here and to get out. Lin asked what would happen if he didn't leave. The father intervened and pronounced that this was no place for anyone who didn't belong in their family. Ching stood back in front of her husband and started yelling at her father why he didn't consider her husband a family member. The father slapped his hand on the table again and reminded his daughter that she had not received the blood of the Holy Spirit, and now she was obligated to divorce him. And if she didn't do it herself, her father would. Lin realized at that moment that his wife had gone to the villa because of him and all she had done was to save their relationship. Then Lin asked his father-in-law, what if they were able to get it? His father replied that if they got the blood, he would no longer interfere with them. But since Ching failed to do so, she must now fulfill her father's will and get a divorce. Lin replied that he was sorry his father would not get a divorce since he had managed to get the blood. His father's face showed no emotion. He couldn't believe that he was really the blood of a holy spirit in front of him. Phone became furious and started shouting that it was impossible. He asked how he managed to get the blood. The father looked at his daughter and asked her what had really happened there. Ching didn't know what to answer her father. Lin intervened and said that Ching actually got the blood and she only wanted to surprise her father and asked her husband to bring it. Phone realized that something was wrong here, and this loser had somehow miraculously gotten the blood of a holy spirit. Phone got up from his chair and started shouting that he knew that Ching was not the winner of the auction and it all looks like a fake. Lin asked Fong if he was so sure it was fake that he was willing to bet. Fong asked what he meant. Lin asked if he wanted to argue with him despite it being their family's big secret. Fong got angry and asked how dare he play with him. He started to apply the technique and shouted that Lin was about to die. Lin looked at him and said that Fong was incredibly weak. With one hand movement, Lin prevented his attack. Lin smiled and told Fong that he was too weak to compete with him. Fong didn't understand what was going on. Lin began to twist his fist and said he would show him the gulf between them. Fong started screaming in pain. Lin ended up throwing him back a few meters. Fong didn't understand why Lin was so strong. Father stopped all of this and ordered it to stop. But father also didn't understand how Lin could become a cultivator. Father invited a master and asked him to check the authenticity of the blood. The master examined the blood and said that it was the original. Phone became furious and started shouting that according to the official information, Ching was not the winner of the auction and the blood was definitely a fake. Phone controlled Ching's every move and was sure that this time she would definitely be excluded from being a candidate for the landlord position. Then the father called a first-class appraiser and asked him to look at and verify the authenticity of the blood. The appraiser began to scrutinize the blood and immediately reported that it was indeed authentic. Father couldn't find the words. Lin really managed to surprise him. Ching was incredibly happy at this time, and only Phone kept shouting that it was impossible. Lin said that Fong was lucky that he didn't make an argument with him. Fong started yelling at him not to get cocky in his territory. Ching took her husband's hand and told him to forget it. Lin told Fong that since his wife had forgiven him, he could be free this time. 
Foam replied that he would definitely avenge this humiliation. The father approached his daughter and said that she had done a good job and he should not have doubted her. Ching told her father that Lin really helped her a lot in this case. After that, father asked that Lin stay for dinner. Father understood that there was no point in being overly cruel. Lin thanked him profusely. However, father still didn't understand why this guy was so strong. Foam meanwhile went to meet the man who had given him the information. He asked him how it was that Ching had the blood. The man replied that the information he provided was accurate, and the fact that the blood of the Holy Spirit was in her possession had nothing to do with him. This person turned out to be the teacher of the elite black dragons, Chiong. Foam started shouting that he had paid him 200,000 and asked that if this was really what he was teaching the black dragons. Chiung glared at him fiercely and asked that did Foam dare to doubt the black dragons. Feng's guards stood up for him. Chiung said that he didn't advise going against the Black Dragon. Feng said, He wants to ask the Black Dragon's help to kill the man. Chiung smiled and asked what he could offer him. Feng said he would give half a million for the case. Chiung replied that he should first find out who he needed to get rid of and only then make a decision. Feng handed him the picture that Lin was in. He said that it was his son-in-law and that it was a pretty trifling matter for that kind of money. Chiung took the picture and said he would come back when he finished the case. The bodyguard asked Fong if the man could be trusted. Fong asked him not to worry as the black dragon could be trusted. The only thing Fong was worried about now was that the position of the head of the family should go to him. Meanwhile, in the black dragon training room, there were discussions about Lin not being dead. Lao claimed that not only was he not dead, but he had become stronger. Lao claimed that he could kill him once, so he could kill him again. Suddenly, Chiung walked in and said that he had an order for half a million. Chiung handed him a picture, and then Lao realized that it was Lin. Such a coincidence seemed rather strange to him. Lao ordered Chiung to first find out everything about the man and report it to him. Chiung said he would do so. Luo stepped away from the conference table, smiled, and wondered how many more lives Lin had left. Meanwhile, Lin and his wife returned home. Ching asked her husband if it was really the blood of the Holy Spirit. Lin replied that he was. Ching then asked why he didn't tell her that he was the man with the surname Lin. Lin replied that if her family directly obtained the blood of a Holy Spirit, a fuss would be made because of it, and he didn't want to cause trouble for her. Ching replied that he was very caring, but she didn't understand where Lin got all the money for it. The guy replied that she didn't need to worry about that. Suddenly Lin jumped up from the sofa and started to cover his wife. Ching was frightened and asked what was wrong. Lin started yelling for him to come out immediately. Xiong appeared out of nowhere and said that he had to try hard to find him. Ching began to yell how he had sneaked into her house. Xiong replied that it was not a house but a dog kennel and added that he likes to socialize with pretty girls. Lin asked his wife to go upstairs and leave it to him. Ching asked him to be careful. Lin looked at Xiong and said that he wasn't worthy of taking his life. Xiong smiled and went on the attack, but he underestimated Lin's skills. The guy threw him back with one punch and said the fun was just beginning. Lin walked over to him and grabbed his wrist. Xiong began to scream in excruciating pain and asked him to stop. In a moment, Xiong began to ask that he spare him since he was a black dragon. Hearing this, Lin was greatly surprised. Lin remembered that Lao was the master of the black dragons, and he would be able to use Chiong to find some clues. Lin told him to scram and he had five seconds or he would die. Chiong asked if Lin was really ready to let him go. Lin started counting down, and at the same second, Chiong flew out of the house with a bullet. Lin knew he had to take advantage of such a golden opportunity and went after him. The boy followed the black dragon all the way to the entrance of the cave. Lin noticed that it was a rather secret place. Chiung burst into the conference room covered in blood. He asked for Lao to be summoned. One of the people present said that Lao had gone to see their head teacher on urgent business. Chiung was angry that he wasn't there at such a moment. Unexpectedly, Lin walked in and said that it was sad that it would not be possible to catch them all. Chiung shouted that he was a corpse and how he only had the sense to follow him. The people present asked Chiung who the man was. Chiung replied that this was the man who had broken his arm. Then Chiung's fellow Chiung, named Wang, said that the man was now a corpse. Chiung tried to stop him. Lin said that he was at the peak of the sixth level, and asked if Wang would dare to attack him. Lin used the imperial gasification sword technique. 
He made an attack with incredible speed and shattered Wang's sword. Wang couldn't understand how that was possible. Lin asked him how he felt about his skills. And after that, he used the pallet cleaving technique. Xiong realized that Wang was defeated. He had no idea in his mind how Lin could be so strong. Lin replied that he would be next. After a few minutes, Lin had dispersed everyone in the cave. Only Chiong remained. Lin walked over to him and said that he was useless to him now. So it was time to say goodbye. Chiong started shouting that he had the key to the treasury. Lin thought he was getting too carried away and almost missed the opportunity. So Lin grabbed him and ordered him to lead him to the treasury. Chiong led him to the door and told him that the key was in the upper right corner. Lin reminded himself that if Chiong deceived him, his life would become hell. Lin took out the key and opened the door. The guy didn't expect black dragons to have a treasury with such a mountain of valuable items, so he decided it was time to get rich. After a while, news reached Lao at the black dragon headquarters that someone had attacked their home. He was told that all the participants had been killed at one point and a large amount of treasure had been stolen. Lao was very embittered, he promised that he would kill whoever had committed such an atrocity to his house. Lao ordered him to prepare his car while he went to meet the leader, and asked him to find out the identity of the person who had broken into the cave. Meanwhile, Lin was already at home and practicing a new technique. There were many good items in the Black Dragon treasury, but only half of them were used to raise the eighth level. At the eighth level, Lin became better at controlling true form Qi and gained the skill of perfect enhancement. Suddenly there was a knock on the door from Qi. Lin opened the door and asked her what was wrong that she was breaking in like that. The girl explained that after he came back, he had asked her not to touch him, but Qing was still worried. Lin stroked his wife and comforted her. The next day came, which meant it was time to meet Lo. The boys met at a cafe. Lin asked them to tell him about the plan of the Miao people. Luo said that there was a man nicknamed the Poison Teacher, and recently his leader had almost improved his level, but he needs the blood of the Holy Spirit to finish it. So he took part in the auction of the mountain villa of Yinwu. Lin now understood why Lo had contacted him. Lo asked Lin where he had hidden the blood of the Holy Spirit. Lin was surprised and asked Luo if he was still trying to steal the Holy Spirit blood from him. Luo explained that that wasn't what he meant. He hinted that the Miao people would definitely intend to steal the blood of the Holy Spirits. Lin replied that they wouldn't be able to find it. The guy knew that his wife's family had the blood now, so getting it would not be easy. Lin asked Lo what he needed to do to become the successor of his family. Luo told him that there would be fights in a month, and if he could win, he would be the only successor. Lin smiled and said that it seemed to be a pretty simple matter. After that, Lin handed Luo an unusual item. He explained to the guy that if they tried to poison him with poison, it was necessary to pour his energy into the thing. Lin would sense it and come to the rescue. Luo picked up the item and asked in surprise where he got it from. Lin said that he had visited the Black Dragon's headquarters last night and found a bunch of valuable items there. Luo couldn't believe his ears that Lin was talking about those very famous Black Dragons. After that, Lin stood up and said he had to go pick up his wife from work. Lo thanked his friend for his help and said that if he needed to, Lin could call him any time. Meanwhile, at the Poison Academy headquarters, Academy Head Shan organized a meeting. She talked about how either the Miao Holy Relic nor the blood of the Holy Spirit ended up in their hands. The girl didn't understand what she should do with her subordinates. An elite member of the second hall of the Poison Academy. Li explained that there had been an accident last time. He also promised that they would definitely take the relic and the blood of the Holy Spirit and asked Shan to trust him. The girl asked what kind of accident happened there. Li revealed that he didn't know why, but the information was false. And the master in the mountain villa defeated him with just one move. And if it wasn't for Brother Lao who had time to take action, they wouldn't have been able to return home alive. Shan said that she had heard that the mountain villa of Yunwu had been badly damaged. Then she asked the elder if the two men were telling her the truth. The elder said they were both telling the truth, and there had been an explosion on the mountain that day that had helped prevent the pursuit, and if it hadn't been for the explosion, no one would have been able to escape. Shan couldn't believe that there were still such people on earth. So she asked the elder whether the man was a man or a woman. The elder replied that that person was a man. Sean was even more interested in this. She ordered that information about the man be provided to her within three days. The girl thought that if he could really intrigue her like that, 
Maybe she would be interested in him as a man. The brothers immediately set off, one asking the other to move a little slower. But the latter replied that if they did not give the information in time, they would be finished. His brother replied to him that the guy was too strong for them. However, Lee calmed him down and told him that he already had a plan. At this time in the house of the Mu family, Cheng's father was talking to Gui Young's youngest son and said that he had heard that Cheng's sister had embarrassed him. Gui Young replied that he didn't expect Lin to interfere with his plan and told him that this guy was very strong. However, he reassured his father that he had already arranged for someone to kill him. His father reminded him that he had to stay clean. Also, his father said that tomorrow is his grandmother's birthday, and if Quichim wants to take this opportunity, he should make her happy, and maybe he can take the title of head of the family. Meanwhile, Lin was practicing the new techniques at home again, and even though the remaining half of the black dragon treasure didn't allow him to break through again, there was a slight improvement. Suddenly, the guy received a message on his phone. Luo informed him that within a few days, the Poison Academy would send people after him, and he should be careful. Lin was surprised that Luo possessed some other abilities besides stealing. He told him that he would take care of it. The next day at the Mu house, everyone gathered to celebrate Grandma's birthday. Lin and his wife also showed up at the event. Lin reassured Cheng and said that she would definitely shine at tonight's party. Cheng reminded him that he never told her what he would give her grandmother. Unexpectedly, Cheng's brother approached them. The girl reminded him that it was grandmother's birthday and not to go too far. The girl also turned to her husband and said that she didn't want any trouble on such a beautiful evening. Lin replied that he would listen to his wife. But he reminded her brother that if he thought of anything, he would be left without fingers. Suddenly someone kicked the door open with a foot and burst in. It turned out to be a man with a scar. He shouted that the Mu family would be destroyed today. Lin lit a cigarette at this time, smiled, and thought that the scarred man had fallen for his trick after all. Those present were frightened and shocked at the same time. His father asked him to calm down as it was his mother's birthday. Scar replied that he had no intention of inconveniencing his guests. And he attacked his father. One of the trusted men immediately ran up to his father and asked if he was okay. He replied that he was fine. He knew that Scar was at the peak of level 6, and he was no equal to him. But his father couldn't figure out if he was really from the Black Dragon Society. He didn't understand how his family could offend the Black Dragon community, so he apologized to Scar. Shram replied that even if he received compensation for his family, he would not be able to afford it. Father assumed it was because of the blood of the Holy Spirit. Suddenly Miss C's grandmother came out and told Scar that it was a sin to break into someone else's house like that. She said that she had been fortunate enough to have the opportunity to interact with his teacher earlier in life, and she hoped that Scar would show a modicum of respect. Scar replied that he didn't understand what respect she was talking about, since she wouldn't be able to make up for his loss and regain his reputation. Miss C asked him who dared to offend the Black Dragons. Scar got angry and replied that she should ask her granddaughter Lin's fiancé. Father immediately asked the boy what he had done that provoked the elders of the Black Dragon Society. Lin replied that it was just a small misunderstanding and he didn't know what to be so angry about. His father ordered him to immediately apologize to Scar. Scar began shouting that 70% of his men were dead, all the treasures from the vault had been stolen, and was this a misunderstanding? The people present were shocked at Lin's action. They were discussing that if he was able to destroy the black dragons, he was incredibly strong. Ms. Seek also believed that if he did such a thing, his strength had reached an innate level, and he could help the Move family grow. Scar at this time prepared to attack and said that first Lin, and then Lin's entire family would be his victim. Scar applied the dragon palm technique. Lin smiled and was happy that it had finally happened and applied the tiger fist technique. The father at this time shouted to Scar that this problem had nothing to do with his family. Ms. C immediately ordered him to shut up. He didn't understand why his mother was telling him that. Ms. C explained to him that no matter how much he begged for mercy from the black dragons, they would still destroy his family. The father started yelling that all this happened because of that trash Lin. His mother told him that he had become such a fool after taking the position of patriarch, and he couldn't see what kind of power this guy had. Miss C watched the battle between Scar and Lin. She said that now they only had to hope that Lin would win. During the massacre, Scar told the guy that his cultivation was good enough, 
but it wasn't enough and he would die today. Lin replied that he wasn't bad either, and it was a pity that they were enemies. Suddenly, Scar shouted for Hu to appear and did so. The deputy head of the Black Dragons, who appeared from somewhere and attacked Lin, 